once you come forward, where are my feet? Where's the center of my body? Right? It's like, um, that's not this. So I didn't actually throw that this way. I threw it this way. Okay. So those are all three indicators that you know when you end that shot, it's like, am I like this? Am I like this? when you do the offside. Did I look like that? Right? When I did this, part of it is when you start doing this drill back and forth where it's continuous, you start feeling whether or not the shield is in the right position. Right? Where are things? And then what you can do is you, now you start throwing them on the diagonal. But are you leaning? Or are you going just on the diagonal? If you're like this, you're leaning. Right? Then you can start throwing them on the lateral. And notice we're only doing this with our right foot right now. And then, what we're going to try and do is we're going to come back here. Now we're going to move this foot. So, this foot has this attack. And our opponent is still in front of us. So when I'm going to actually take a step, I still need to keep my shield to bear on that opponent. Right? So if you catch yourself doing the open closed door trick, something's wrong. These, these are primary in that if your opponent's moving towards you, right, then I've learned that I don't necessarily have to shoot this way, that I can actually step over here and throw this. I can step over here and throw a snap wrap. I can step back and throw a snap wrap. Basically, I'm set to receive. I don't have to walk away. I don't have to back up because he's coming up. I'm actually ready to deal with this. So, those are the simple object lessons. Now, once you've moved your foot forward, and you've thrown this, now you get to, yeah, it's like, where do I want to go next? Right? Okay, I'm going to rear up as it's coming towards me. I'm going to come down and go lateral. Right? Because now I've cleared his shield, and I'm now cutting across the top angle of the shield, and he is sure is in the right place. Because when I started the blow, they were right in front of me, so it looked to them like it was just going to be this. And then I took this step, and now all of a sudden it's over the top of the shield. Now I'm back, or now I go here. Now I'm going to retreat two steps, and I'm going to be up when I'm ready to go. I'm not going to back up, drop my shield, drop my sword. Okay. Now the other lovely thing that you do get to do with people that you know are into motion is they get to lead you around. Alright? And that's a drill. Follow me. Danji. Give me the love. Alright? So it's like, okay. So we, we, we address it that this is what I want you to do. He tells me what he wants me to do. And if, if he's going to stop or things like that, you know, then it's agreed upon what I can. And I know I'm not going to jack him in the face. Right? But I'm going to put the blade, I'm going to put the point there or whatever, to show him that I recognize what you're doing. He may move his shield more than he usually does. Because again, it's a drill, right? Drills are simple, drills are safe. So the, but the idea of this is, once you get there, it's like, and he freezes, it's like, okay, how many returns are there? Uh, one, two, three, and you just keep working. Right? So you agree that there's going to be stops in it, how many returns are there, shifting feet. Yeah, it takes a while. It really does. But it proves to the trainee that all of these things are possible if the opponent does exactly that. And you try again as the trainer to make the situation in the drill as common to combat. Not what he's going to do. Not what he's going to do, but where in 
that upper run belted, right, lesser knight sort of fighting scenario with these common things. Okay. And then, of course, you, again, seek out the top 2% and go through the drill with them and then tell them, I want crown level combat situations. Now, the thing with that is that, again, with Thorfinn, if we're, if we're in crown, he's probably not going to let me get right here without really doing something. Right. So you have to understand when you ask what? for that ground level situation that if you do something like this, so then you go through it again to make sure that you don't lean. And he may give you three or four opportunities to do nothing but not lean. Right? So as long as you're successful in doing nothing but not doing this, not doing that, not doing this, not doing that, his grace will consider the drill a success on your part. And he reports that to you, and away you go. Okay. Questions so far? Oh, I love that. I'm going to incorporate that on Monday. Okay. We never did the whole stop part. And then, then okay, what returns can you do? Exactly. And this is where the training uh, of my school starts to expand because no matter what the training is, it should be capable of dealing with a student who's a beginner to his grace. That's the way I look at it. Maybe the speeds vary. Maybe I change weapons forms on his grace and I fight two stick or I fight great sword or whatever. Now, am I going to do that with a beginner? this and I do this to open it up. If he doesn't come in here, I'm going to try and go inside real quick. But the timing is a lot faster than I would do it with Dave. Where I might give Dave three clicks to do it, I'm only going to give him one because I know his ability. The primary thing about training versus practice, and especially in a drill like this, once again, is proving the object lesson to yourself. Does it work for me. And if it doesn't work for me right now, how do I get it? Once again, if you know for a fact that you're you're walking out and all your fights are just like this with Bob and Steve and you know, and it's kind of like the shields are down and everybody's still trying to pound one another, but even though the shields are down, you still can't hit one another, <laughs> then something's wrong. If you're constantly in and up squared off, right? And usually what this, the telling part of this is it practices. You're going to have to practice. You're good. Right? You've used up so much energy in your fights that you're pooped. And you ask yourself, gee, if I was competing in Crown, and Crown is like, how many rounds? Uh, uh, 12. 12, yeah, 12 to 16 rounds. And I've actually only had five fights with Bob, Steve, and Jim. And they have worn me down, and it took an hour to fight those five fights. <laughs> Something's really wrong. Something's not right. Now, again, his grace fighting Sven, maybe those fights do take a little bit longer, right? Make sure you get to spend time with them and ask them, please give me some tips. I have 